Sri Lanka's most powerful news brand. A very good evening and welcome to a brand new edition of News First Weekend coming to you live from our news studios in Colombo. I'm Arundhati Mudanayaka. Let's start off with a look at the stories making headlines this evening. Over 100 millimeters of rain expected in several areas around the country. Government to suffer 2.7 billion loss due to program to distribute tabs among students and teachers. Repay the debts prior to the maturity period. World Bank advises the government. A water project for the people of Varani North through Gammadha. Sri Lanka suffers major setback in second test against India. Former Zimbabwe finance minister in prison for defrauding the Zimbabwean Central Bank. Now to start off the news, we are going to cross over to Chaturanga Haparachi who is at the News First newsroom. Good evening, Chaturanga. Good evening to our viewers. Uh, for over nine months, we reported to you what was happening at the Presidential Commission of Inquiry into the bond issuance. Uh, we also uh, brought you details of what happened in our country after the bond scams of 2015 February and 2016 March. We uh, reported to you how perpetual treasuries limited amass massive wealth uh, to the tune of 6.8 billion rupees um, in the quarter when you take a look at April 2016 and September 2016. What has happened to perpetual treasuries profits now? From the quarter starting from April 2017 to September 2017, the profits of Perpetual Treasuries Private Limited has gone down. The profit value stands at 316 million at the moment. This is from April 2017 to September 2017. We also have to keep in mind that this is the time frame where the Presidential Commission of Inquiry into the bond issuance operated and uh, carried out their inquiries and examinations into what happened at these two bond scams. Now, this is a reduction of 6,000. 484 million rupees or 6.4 billion rupee, rupees if you approximately calculate the value. Um, you may ask me why this has happened Arundhati. This happened because the central bank uh, carried out an internal investigation into the bond scam uh, back in the day and they decided to ban perpetual treasuries from carrying out primary dealings or operating as a primary dealer. So this also resulted in uh, these uh, profits to be taken away from the perpetual treasuries uh, limited to this extent now several people several experts have been talking about the profits that have been amassed by this company there were various allegations raised as the as the company and uh, even the former governor of the central bank we'll have a listen to what wasanta samara singh the convener of the voice against corruption had to say about this the profits for six months dropped from 6,500 million because this is all the money that they earned by robbing the central bank and the EPF. The profits of perpetual treasuries for the first six months of 2017 reduced to 316 million. Profits during the same time a year ago were 6,815 million. This clearly shows that of the 12 billion, around 11 billion of it are still in various bank accounts. The accounts of perpetual treasury should be checked and the government should take steps to regain the money that was stolen back to the treasury. This is the money that belongs to the people. This was the perpetual magic show conducted by a father and his son-in-law. They were protected by the United National Party and this government. Who benefited and who received kickbacks has been clearly revealed. <laughs> As Mr. Vasant Samarasinghe said, the retained profits of Perpetual Treasuries Limited stands at a staggering 10 billion rupees. While uh, people in one corner of our country are enjoying luxuries to this tune, there are various other people living across the country who are battered by adverse weather, high costs of living. This is the common uh, case in uh, almost all the people living in our country. If you take a look at the people living in the Kiral Patia area, Track 7, Track 3 villages and even Kukulkatwa villages in Mahavilachya. This is just one example for you as to how people in our country, our own brothers and sisters are living amongst hardships, uh, working day and night to get through to the other day so that they can feed their children and their families. This is what they have uh, going daily. The usually lush green lands of Vilakshya in Nanradhapura district are barren today due to lack of rainfall. 
villages in the area told news first that they travel many miles each day to find drinking water. They also lamented that they have not been able to farm for three consecutive seasons due to the lack of rainfall. These are lands which were cultivated on by our parents and forefathers, but today we don't have water, we don't have anything, everything is gone to waste. This is a fate that has befallen the tank located in the midst of the village. November is the time when the monsoons end. By this time, this tank should be overflowing. Look at it. Is there any water in this tank? While bearing the brunt of the damage inflicted by the drought, these families are also facing a food shortage. They note that it is with great difficulty they find food to feed their children. We live amidst many hardships. We also have to deal with the issue of wild elephants. We cannot engage in farming activities. We never receive any form of relief either. We have been unable to farm for four seasons. We don't have a proper income. This is how we live. It seems like even the gods are turning their gaze away from us. The people are puzzled as to why the attention of the officials are not directed towards their issues. With tearful eyes, they await for a brighter tomorrow. Till this day, none of the officials have come to this area. They have not given us anything. All I have to say to the leaders are open your eyes and look at the issues that we are facing. Don't work only for the election. News First brought you details of a situation where there is a once again misappropriation when providing tablet computers to school students. This was a promise by this good governance government when they came into power. They said that all uh, school students will have their own uh, tablet computer when they are doing advanced level examinations. Now, while we are not uh, obstructing these development projects carried out by the people why we say it is the correct thing to do uh, to get these uh, children uh, the students of our country the access to ICTA the access to information communication technology if someone is trying to line their pro pockets through these uh, projects through these uh, development projects that are being carried out then the outcome of the project will be of no use. Uh, so we have an Action TV expose, a follow-up of a story that we have been uh, closely covering here at News First. Let's take a look at Action TV. A proposal was made to provide tabs for advanced level students through the 2016 budget. During the 2018 budget speech, Minister of Finance Mangala Samaravira stated that this promise has been fulfilled. However, this debate occurred on the same subject when the expenditure head of the Ministry of Education was being discussed. Where are the tabs? None of the students have received the tabs as yet. When do you expect to give these tabs? Oh. Honourable Deputy Speaker, I need to make a clarification. The procurement process is being finalised. We will be distributing branded iPads early next year. This will be given to A-level students, A-level teachers and principals. There is no doubt about it. We have a responsibility to do what we are doing the right way. That is why there was a delay in getting this done. <laughs> the minister stating that iPads will be distributed is also an issue because the minister might not be aware that what he referred to is a brand name of a certain device. Another issue is that the government is preparing to purchase 200,000 tabs, while the tender notice that they had published clearly sets the requirement at 195,148. On the 29th of last month, we revealed an even more startling issue, this time regarding the manner in which the supplies of these tabs was selected by the Ministry of Education. Other suppliers who opposed this selection were granted an opportunity to go before the Cabinet Procurement's Appeals Committee on the 16th of this month. However, this three-member appeal committee has thrown into doubt the entire issue. 
The fact that the parties were not allowed to be represented by a lawyer during this inquiry creates further doubt. The statement made by the Minister in Parliament reveals that the cost incurred by the government in procuring these tabs will be in excess of 6.89 billion rupees. This procurement process is one where the requirements of the state were amended at the last minute so that it provided an unfair advantage to one supplier. The loss that the state will incur due to this transaction will be in excess of 2.7 billion rupees. The amount of foreign exchange that will be leaving the country as a result of this transaction will be over 22 million US dollars. We spoke about how people living in our own country and villages in our own country are suffering due to the lack of fundamental basic needs. Uh, the politicians, the public representatives that we appoint, they seem to be clustered uh, with the local government elections. They seem to be focused on having the local government elections and the people, the problems of the people have been forgotten. Yes, we agree that the people should have a right to exercise their franchise, the people should have a right to vote in their public representatives. but. At this moment, do these public representatives go into these places of power and forget the people, forget what they came for and forget their responsibilities? That what is happening in our country at present. If you take a look at the examples that we've shown, some people are trying to line their pockets, fill their pockets by using development projects brought in by the government. Some people are enjoying the money that should be for the people. So this is what is happening in our country. But is this the correct path to trod on? Is this the correct path to travel on? Are questions that uh, need answers finally while we agree that people should have the right to exercise their franchise has this government got their priorities in place well that is the question indeed thank you chaturanga for that update with various views regarding the bond scam expressed during a number of events held today the two parties have driven the country into a hopeless and destitute situation. They spoke a lot about fraud and corruption. Now the people are all talking about the biggest fraud that took place, which had been committed through the intervention of the UNP leadership. The fearless Prime Minister goes before the Commission. He was afraid that his pants will be taken off. However, Dapul Oliveira didn't get a chance to question him. What could be asked was what was discussed earlier. If there is no shade of fraud in his heart, why did he want to impose? conditions. Why did he want to choose who questioned him? Then they shamelessly call him the fearless Prime Minister. It would have been better to call him the shameless Prime Minister. As a member of COPE, if we did something wrong or had ties with someone we are investigating, we would have to challenge the President and the Prime Minister. There is nothing to fight with them. The President was elected to create a government of good governance. While being a member of such a government, if we are flirting with fraud, corruption or bribery, then there is something seriously wrong. The president made a strong statement. If he was like this with everyone, then the people he was taking aim at might rethink how they should act while being a part of this government. Even if someone on his side commits something wrong, he will see it as a mistake. Maitri Palasirisena was elected by 6.2 million people in order to fulfill their aspirations of a just society. Whatever obstacles come before him, he will stand by this commitment. The Metri Parton predicts over 100 millimeters of rain in the northern, eastern, north central and Uva provinces tonight. AccuWeather also notes that Sri Lanka and South India could experience heavy rains over the coming days. Due to low atmospheric disturbance in the vicinity of Sri Lanka, showery and cloudy conditions over the island and surrounding sea areas will continue. Showers or thunder showers will occur at times in the most provinces of the island. The highest rainfall of 99 millimeters of rain recorded over a 24-hour period that ended at 8.30 a.m. today was reported from Batiklo. Fairly heavy rainfalls of 75 to 100 millimeters are forecast at some places, particularly in the western, southern Sabargamu and Uwa provinces, while strong gusty winds of about 50 kilometers per hour are expected in the northern and eastern provinces. Meanwhile, international weather forecasting websites note that a change in the weather pattern will result in downpours returning to Sri Lanka and parts of southern India into the coming week. According to AccuWeather, heavy rains are expected in Tamil Nadu and Kerala provinces in India with possible flash floods in Chennai, Madurai, Coimbatore and Koshi cities. It also notes that showers and thunder showers are expected in many parts of Sri Lanka as well. 
Meanwhile, India's Department of Meteorology notes that low pressure conditions may develop in the northeastern part of the Bay of Bengal on the 29th of this month. Addressing a public forum organized by the World Bank in collaboration with the Department of Economics of the University of Colombo senior country economist Ralph Van Dorm spoke about bunched up debt repayments and how to retain the international market confidence in the country. I mean, uh, there's a bunching of debt coming up in 2019 and for the next uh, few years and that actually presents a risk to, to, the, uh, to, the, to the government and also to the, to the economy because these are very large payments that are due. And it's important that uh, if you deal with these risks well, um, there, there, there will be opportunities. For so how do you deal with those risks? It's important to manage liabilities. For example, if you have a debt payment coming up in 2019, you don't have to wait until 2019 to make the payment because if you wait until 2019, then the financial market will know that you're in a weak position. You want to be in a strong position, right, when you do a transaction. So Sri Lanka is now in a stronger position than next year. So it's better to try to pay back the debt today rather than waiting when the debt is due and then you're dealing from a position of weakness. It's also important uh, then to have a more strategic approach to debt. So we encourage the government to have to look carefully at the debt portfolio, to look carefully at the continued liabilities and, uh, and, and, and uh, plan better how you deal with debt to make sure that the bunching of liabilities that you're now facing is not going to happen in the future. Funds were donated today for the development of the Valava Maunadi Community Water Project in Viharagala Suryavava. The event was held under the auspices of Minister of Housing and Construction, Sajid Premadasa. 18.9 million rupees in state funds will be invested in the project. The project will provide clean drinking water to 3,085 families residing in four Gramanildara divisions in Suryavava. The taste of money that they felt during the time they were in power has still not been satisfied. Therefore, they still thirst for more dollars. When they come into power, building classrooms and pools at schools and providing clean water to people will be at the bottom of their priorities. They can satisfy their urge to initiate large-scale projects so that they can obtain commissions. This is how a stadium that was estimated to cost 1.2 billion ended up costing 4.2 billion. <laughs> Government launched yet another public service initiative by fulfilling the drinking water requirements of the Varuni North Village in Jaffna. The project was launched with financial aid by the people for the people. One of the main problems faced by the people of Varni North in the Jaffna district was the lack of drinking water. These people, who belong to 309 families, fulfill their drinking water requirements with the waterways that get active with the rain. Other water needs were met by water from a well which was not suitable for drinking. Drying up of both of these waterways became a common occurrence with the droughts that were caused by dry weather. The water project initiated by Gamadha on the 1st of July brought new hopes to the people of Farnino. Today was a day that fulfilled the aspirations of these people of Kolamindara Pulatta, Murkamurti Hindu Kovil in Varni North. As a solution to the 30-year-long water crisis today, they received a water project with the tube wells. Nice first Christina Ratnam provided leadership to this project, which was launched with the financial aid from the people. The project was vested in the public today in the presence of Nice first members. <laughs> When someone falls, there has to be someone who can lend them a hand to rise. We are like the hands that help people to rise again. By being a strength to help you take your lives forward, we will always be with you. Our organization is always with the people. The people of this country are with us. We are launching many such projects. Politicians only help those whom they think are helpful to them. But we are dedicated to brighten the future of even the youngest child here. <laughs>
Minmelum, I hope that you will be able to take this service to the most needy. Issuing of the first day cover and stamp for Christmas took place today under the auspices of Minister of Post and Postal Services and Minister and Muslim Religious Affairs MHA Halim in Kandy today. Minister Abdul Halim presented the official first day cover and stamp to the Bishop of Kandy, Joseph Viani Fernando. Awarding certificates for the students who won the All Island Art Competition that was organized in line with Christmas also took place at the occasion. All of us belong to the family of humans. Whatever language we speak, whatever religion we believe in, we are all children of this beautiful country. At this decisive juncture, we must consider that all of us belong to the Sri Lankan race. We should think of ourselves as one race and one country. If we can give this idea to the world, that is what we want. If someone cannot respect the national flag and national anthem that signifies this national unity, then that person has no right to call himself a Sri Lankan. It would be a great insult to Mother Lanka. Time for a short commercial break. Stay with news first. We will be right back. And with that, we wrap up tonight's edition of Week in Primetime News. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a great week ahead of you. Good night.